Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this presentation entitled Dynamic Response of Curved Surface Slider Devices Under Severe Input Motion. My name is Marco Furinghetti. I am Assistant Professor at the University of Pavia and the Center Foundation. And this research work has been developed uh, together with uh, Dr. Young and Professor Calvi from University of Washington and together with the Professor Pavese of the University of Pavia. This is the outline of the presentation. I will start with the scope of the research work, and then I will describe the characteristics of the tested devices and the testing protocol. And finally, I will show the experimental results for both the typologies of devices which have been considered and the recent modeling strategies for the overstroke behavior of sliding devices, and I will draw concluding remarks. So the scope of this work was to investigate the behavior of sliding devices under extra design displacement demands. And a series of full-scale devices have been tested in order to apply displacement demands, which are actually higher than the maximum geometrical allowance, which is generally ruled by the geometrical characteristics of the sliding surfaces. So these are the characteristics of the tested devices. So we adopted the concave surface slider devices with one and two stainless steel spherical surfaces. So in order to consider different typologies of sliding motions. And as you can see in the table, all the devices are summarized. We can notice that there are two typologies uh, of the devices, uh, and then uh, we will see later on in the presentation uh, um, which are the main characteristics for the two typologies. And uh, uh, I also noticed that um, the sliding materials uh, are different for uh, type 1 devices, uh, um, and uh, actually they have exactly the same diameter of the internal sliding pad and uh, all of them are double concave surface slider devices. And whereas uh, for type two, we have a different uh, number of sliding surfaces, uh, uh, namely uh, we have uh, the fourth and the sixth, which are single concave surface sliders. And uh, the fifth is a double concave surface slider, but all of them are equipped with uh, PTFE based materials. So these are the main characteristics for both the typologies of devices under investigation. Uh, type 1 is uh, represented by a counter gore gap uh, where uh, the uh, sliding uh, surface uh, is installed. Uh, just to remind that the uh, sliding surface uh, is made up of uh, a stainless steel, uh, very thin spherical plate. And uh, actually for type 1, uh, this uh, spherical surface uh, is installed uh, within a counter gore gap. Whereas for type two, these sliding surfaces are installed through a web bead. So these two typologies, which are commonly adopted in the common practice and in the real applications, may have different consequences on the damage of the sliding pad material when displacement demands higher than the design value are investigated and applied. So the testing protocol has been carried out at the central laboratory for in Pavia, in Italy, by using the very tester system of the Shake Lab. And you can see the, the overall setup is shown in the slide, which is actually able to perform tests along two orthogonal directions. And you can also see some of the technical details of such equipment. Uh, I just highlight the maximum displacements, which is uh, uh, very high for longitudinal direction and transverse direction, and also the maximum velocity, which is uh, uh, very high values, um, together with the maximum allowance for the, mask, uh, for the uh, vertical load of the device, uh, and uh, also the um, operative frequency range, uh, which can be uh, from 0 to um, 20 hertz. So here is the uh, testing protocol, which has been applied for all the devices. Um, we uh, have computed uh, actually the maximum displacement demand for all the tests in order to obtain 
25% of the inner pad uh, uncovered by the sliding interface uh, so that the extra stroke behavior can be accurately uh, investigated. As you can see in the table uh, for type uh, devices type 1, uh, we applied a uh, um, triangular waveform, uh, which is shown in the slide, and for type 2, a sinusoidal uh, waveform. I just want to highlight that the extra stroke behavior is investigated just in a single direction, whereas in the opposite direction, just a limited displacement is achieved. So these are results for type 1 devices, and these are the static responses for all the devices. I just remind that uh, type 1 is actually the same uh, device uh, equipped with the different sliding materials. And uh, uh, this is a very important result because we can notice that uh, the, uh, the overall response uh, as the, um, display, the design displacement is overcome remains approximately with the same uh, recentering contribution. The only effect is uh, just an increase in the friction coefficient, as, as we can notice. And uh, this particular behavior can be captured if uh, we consider the actual friction coefficient force, uh, which can be numerically computed uh, by subtracting from the total force uh, of the device a uh, numerical contribution uh, of the recentering force. From these graphs, uh, we can notice that uh, actually what we observed uh, in the previous slide uh, can be also noticed uh, by looking at the uh, hysteretic response uh, of the purely friction contribution. Uh, by considering type 2 devices uh, uh, where the wet bead uh, is, uh, con is um, considered, uh, we can notice that uh, there is no more increasing uh, uh, friction coefficients. Uh, and uh, consequently, uh, we, can, um, we can see that uh, there is no significant variation in, in the post-design response. So uh, this is mainly due to the uh, smoother uh, changing in the, um, in, from the ordinary uh, response to the extra stroke response for, uh, due to the, the weld bead. Uh, and so consequently, uh, consequently also the uh, force response uh, it has no... Uh, significant variation in comparison to the ordinary response. And uh, this behavior can be also noticed uh, by looking at the damage evidence uh, uh, of the, the sliding pads. Uh, uh, in the first row of, of uh, images, we can find uh, uh, the uh, type 1 devices, uh, whereas in the bottom line of the uh, figures, uh, we can notice the type, uh, type 2. And uh, if we uh, consider type 1 devices, uh, we can notice that uh, the damage uh, at the sliding material uh, is uh, actually uh, significant uh, in comparison to the type 2 devices uh, where no significant uh, damage can be noticed. So finally, the modeling strategies for uh, this behavior uh, are actually uh, three in the recent uh, uh, research works. Uh, there is an analytical model uh, which is actually uh, the modeling of the increasing uh, friction coefficient uh, as the design displacement is overcome, which, which is uh, uh, easily modeled by considering this uh, um, expression, empirical expression, and details are contained in this uh, research uh, article. And then there are two uh, open seas uh, link, uh, nonlinear links. Uh, the first one uh, has been developed by Young et al. 2019, uh, actually for variable friction um, devices. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this particular uh, open seas link uh, can be adopted and uh, adapted for, uh, for the representation of the extra stroke behavior for concave surface slider devices. And actually, another open seas nonlinear link has been uh, developed uh, by Ponzo et al. Uh, 2021, which is actually focused on the extra stroke uh, response. So, all the details uh, for these uh, numerical and experimental um, investigations can be found in these two uh, articles, uh, Furinghetti et al. Uh, 2021 and uh, Ponzo et al. 2021.
So concluding, uh, we have seen that the, uh, without the restraining rims, uh, uh, curved surface slider devices can achieve displacements which exceed the design value. And uh, the, um, uh, actually, when the typology of devices uh, installed the um, uh, stainless steel surface, um, sliding surface uh, within a counterbore gap, uh, we have an increase in the friction coefficient rather than no significant variation in the response uh, and no significant uh, damage when, when the uh, sliding uh, surface uh, is installed uh, thanks to a wet bead. So reaching the design displacement, uh, the, the, this does not represent the failure condition for the isolation devices. This is a very important, uh, very important conclusion. So we have to account for this uh, behavior when uh, numerical uh, analysis is carried out. And uh, when uh, a counterbore gap uh, technology, is, uh, technology is adopted, uh, we can, uh, it is possible uh, to model uh, the, the uh, resulting behavior in the force response. Uh, uh, by considering analytical expressions uh, uh, rather than uh, nonlinear links in open seas. This is it for this presentation. I really want to thank you for your kind attention. And uh, if you have uh, any further question, uh, please uh, email us uh, uh, to the following uh, email addresses.